If you were to ask someone what the most effective weapon a pirate had in his arsenal, he may come up with a number of different answers, ranging anywhere from a cannon to a cutlass. But in truth, the most effective weapon was the one that was probably least likely to be viewed as a weapon at all. That's right, the pirate flag, otherwise known as the Jolly Roger. Its first recorded use was in the late 1600s by pirates attacking Spanish settlements in and around the Caribbean. It was described basically as just being a simple red field. In fact, most early pirate flags were just blood red in color. These are two of the oldest known pirate flags in existence. Both of them were captured off the coast of Africa in the late 1700s. The one on the left was turned in by a simple sailor with very little explanation. The one on the right was captured by Lieutenant Richard Curry, who later became Admiral of the Royal Navy. The one on the left was, is actually in the Allen Maritime Museum, and the one on the right is in the Royal Navy Museum in England. Both the red and black flags were common on naval vessels. The reason being is they were considered naval ensigns, or Navy flags at the time. Many of the pirates during the 18th century or during the Golden Age of Piracy actually got their start on naval vessels. So a lot of those traditions were brought from the Navy over into piracy. By flying the red flag, you were telling your enemies that no quarter would be given. In other words, once the fighting was done, any captives would immediately be killed. Whereas flying the black flag, you were telling your enemies that if they gave up before the fighting started, their lives would be spared. Now, pirates really didn't like to fight. The fact is, is that during a fight, you lost valuable human lives, you also lost access to the prize or the treasure that they were fighting so hard to obtain from you. And this is where pirates began to gain their notorious reputations, where if after a long battle, they would have taken out their frustrations on the surviving crew members. This is also where brand recognition started to come into play. In 1700, Emmanuel Wynne decorated his pirate flag with a skull and crossbones and an hourglass. This is the first instance that we know of pirates actually putting things on their flags. Remember, this is a time when no one could read or write, so symbolism was very important to them. So utilizing symbols such as skulls and crossbones, hourglasses, wings, swords, was very common not just for the pirates, but for society in general. Symbols were just an easy way to get the message across. Now, where the name Jolly Roger actually came from, we're really not sure. That has been lost over time. But we do know that several pirates during the 1720s referred to their flag as the Jolly Roger. Now, we do believe the name Jolly Roger probably came from two separate places or a combination thereof. One, the Jolly Rouge, which in French means pretty red, or the Old Roger, which was an old term during the 18th century used for the devil. What we do know is mariners during the golden age of piracy seeing the Jolly Roger flying from the masthead brought terror and dread. Even today, the pirate flag, or the pirate's most effective weapon, endures. In pop culture, it is the most copied image throughout the world of all time. When oh brother, the captain...